recording. We're going to try today to set up a um, low poly character model. Now you can either directly use that low poly character model or use it as a base for high poly sculpting and then a retopology process. So let me go through. I think I've gone through this before um, slightly, but let's do it again. So let's say we're going to start off with like box modeling. So let's say I begin with a box and I'm slowly going to like change that into a torso shape. So something like, maybe like that. Um, so torso is shaped like that. Okay, so this is a very basic shape, but uh, hopefully it just gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's say I'm doing something like that, right? Uh, maybe let's do a cut here. Then you might cut a hole in here. You might start extruding arms. And so on. Uh, we can even work on a symmetry. So if we have a symmetry mirror, we can ignore one side and we'll just work on one side and uh, it'll duplicate over. Okay. And then I can extrude from here as well. Um, and then get my leg. And this is why it's called box modeling. We're starting off literally with a box almost. So this is what we might start with. Um, does that make sense so far? Everything okay? So we'll end up with something like a very basic, like a, we might do the head separately, we might not, doesn't matter. We'll have a very basic character. Um, we'll try and get it as organic looking as we can, but it'll be a really basic one. And then there's two things we can do. So once we have that, we can either like um, take that as a base, go directly to um, to texture it, and especially if I'm doing something like um, uh, a game like, for example, like Virginia. Uh, so something like this, these could be directly box modeled, right? They're really simple. Um, so they could be directly box modeled and then just going straight to texturing and rigging and animation. You probably don't need any in between. So we could do something like that where this is just final. So we go to texture, rig, animate, and basically in the game engine, done. Okay. Option number two, we take that base model, we call it a base use that as a base model. We'll go to something like ZBrush or Mudbox, which you've seen, and we'll retopologize it. Uh, sorry, uh, we subdivide it, not retopologize. So we'll subdivide it. So this is our base model. Um, now, I'm showing you, what I'm showing you is you, you create your own base models. There are base models out there. You can just download and use your base models. Um, Mudbox even comes with its own base model. So it has its own like um, humanoid version. Now it is a very realistic humanoid one. So let's say if you wanted a more stylized character, you probably do want to build your own base model. So if you want to have like um, simplified limbs and legs, but but you kind of want somewhere in between um, like fully realistic and something like this where it's really blocky, um, you probably would like to create your own um, uh, your own kind of like base mesh so then you'll subdivide so we'll get like a much smoother kind of like a base base mesh and this will be like anywhere from hundreds of thousands to a few thousands to a, a million to millions of polys depending on what we're doing Okay. Uh, again, always remember that thing we was talking about. Try not to subdivide until you have the, the silhouette and the shape um, w to what you are happy with. Try not to, uh, to add too many polys because it's harder to make large changes and silhouette changes with a lot of polys than it is at lower polys. So to, to always like try to try to resist that temptation to go up to a much higher poly count and work on tiny details before you have your base shape. So then like you'll sculpt your shape, get it, get it to what you want to look like. Um, maybe we have like super elongated legs, who knows, whatever you want to do. So then you would um, subdivide and sculpt that. Once you're happy with the sculpt, you would then 
retopologize. So you can either manually retopologize, which we have not done so far, by the way, because it is very, very heavy work. It takes ages. Um, so Autodesk or Treatise Max, sorry, has retopology tools, especially new retopology tools that came out like last year. Um, let's see, 1.1 is available now, I think. So they're very new. Um, and retopology tools essentially just help. I don't think this will show you much now. There should be a video here. Um, they essentially show how you can get like a really high poly mesh down to a low poly version using um, Autodesk's own like inbuilt retopology tools. Um, so they're just like a modifier that goes on and you can retopologize pretty well. And it, it does take quite a bit of knowledge and um, quite a bit of work to try and get to get it to work well. There's a few different like methods. So there you go. So this is like the original version. And it's kind of messy. You see there's a lot of stretch polys. It's not great. Um, and then using the, the Autodesk retopology, it automatically tries to retopologize, um, not only to reduce poly count, but also to make things look neater. Okay, so that is inbuilt into, um, and these are other variants of it. It's basically just like a, uh, a what you call it, a uh, modifier. Um, so that is inbuilt to 3ds Max now, uh, but we also have the retopology in Mudbox because they're all, you know, it's a shared company. So I, we showed you the Mudbox retopology, which goes directly in, uh, works directly in Mudbox, which is pretty good for organic stuff. And is seeing as we're making something organic, hopefully the Mudbox retopology will be good enough for you. Um, the Autodesk retopology tools are a bit better for like hard surface stuff, um, which we, we hopefully don't need as much, but just so you know, it is there as well, it is available. So we would apologize. So we'll get to something more reusable. So like maybe, maybe something like uh, aim anywhere from five thousand, depending on how simple your character is, um, to around I think like let's go one hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, now be this one hundred and fifty thousand polys, that is like main character, and that is main character realistic. That's like uh, Nathan Drake levels of like. Um, naughty dog realistic right so it is very rare that a student um, character especially because you've only had a year of 3d modeling generally people don't become character modelers until like until they have a good few years of experience under the belt so it would be very unlikely that you have 150k poly character and i'm like oh that makes sense why you have 150k poly character um it is much more likely you're towards the 5k end if that makes sense um if you're doing 150k, it may be that you're not being efficient in use of polycats uh, of, of polygons. Uh, it may not be the case. I don't know your skill set, but um, well, I, I do kind of know your skill set. But you could be amazing at character modeling. Uh, you could have been working on it, and and that's completely fine if you are. But I'm just saying it's not likely. So I wouldn't take the 150k as like, oh, we can go all the way up there. It's just more like literally that's the the professional uh, min max in general. Right. Again, no hard and fast rules. So what you want to be careful of when you retopologize, remember we could add curves to the body. And this is the same with our box modeling as well. We want to always add segments, especially in these areas. So anywhere that bends, um, anywhere that has a range of motion, I want to have some segments. And the reason, and I want the segments to kind of follow the range of motion. The reason being, I need them to bend, right? Um, and if I need them to bend, I need them to squash the way they want to squash. So as an example, if I take just this elbow, here's an elbow, here's like a, let's say that's a, the polygon's cylinder for the elbow, okay? I may want to do something like, this at a minimum uh, and I probably add another one here possibly so I don't know if that makes sense but hopefully you can see if I bend this so this is the here's the elbow and this is the inner elbow. 
So if I bend this way, this polygon here will squash, this one here will squish, um, and it is able to basically like take up the slack, and then these segments here can bend a little bit to kind of simulate that um, skin stretching when I when I kind of like. Uh, when, when I bend my elbow, right? So if you look at your elbow right now, and uh, you close it, basically the inner elbow collapses in and of itself, um, adds a little crease, and the outside area will stretch, okay? So sometimes you'll even see like they have a, uh, yeah, they'll have, like, oh, sorry, I've, I'm after messing this up completely. I'm sorry, it's exactly the opposite. the other way around sorry blanked okay so this part will stretch sorry and then this part will just collapse and on itself because it's only one little segment so this will squish in on itself this part will scratch and it has a little bit of extra area to stretch as well so these this area and this area will also stretch does that kind of make sense yeah it's just like yeah and uh and if we want to we can even go uh, more detailed like where we can take this and we could like make it kind of stick out a bit like that So you're kind of building a little elbow bump out if that makes sense. So again, that will stretch a little bit better um, And you'd be doing the same here for like shoulder caps um, Like the so the butt area like I have a not that funny story, but I have a story from like one of the person who taught me 3D modeling. He did work for um, the Department of Transport Authority or whatever. Um, and they wanted like a, a really basic human, uh, but they didn't want it to have any features. Um, they wanted it to be just like a basic uh, emoji human almost. Um, and he, they want, but they wanted it to sit down and to walk around and stuff like that. And he had to model a butt because you need to have a butt to, it needs to stretch and it needs to, otherwise you get distortion and you get like flattening of that area. Um, so it actually is important. Um, and it was a whole thing. He couldn't, he couldn't convince them that, uh, he needed to actually model a, like a butt area in order for, for it to walk essentially and sit down. Um, because if you have like a perfectly flat, when you stretch that or you sit down, it's just going to get like, you're going to get stretching along there. So that was the problem. Okay, so once you have that, you'd retopologize that, and then you'd like um, go to your texture rig animate. So unwrap, unwrap, texture rig and animate. So it's almost like you're starting low poly going high poly, going back to low poly, uh, but because you're going back to low poly from a, a, a very detailed rig, um, you could also bake your high poly detail into the low poly. Uh, we've done baking, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we have, yeah. So that's kind of the process. Um, any questions so far? Do you want this image? I don't know if it's helpful or not. Let me just label it a bit more. So character uh, modeling is generally, especially uh, advanced character modeling, it's something that like, it can take people a year to do a one character um, if it's a very, very high poly character. So let's have a look at ArtStation. I'm sure we'll find something. Speaking about that, I know it's not on the uh, brief, but... Do we need, now with all the changes, do we need to post our projects or it, it's up to Sketchfab or? 
Uh, I would I would follow the brief. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. If it's not in the brief, it's not. Uh, I don't know how you would have the whole thing on Sketchfab either. Like your entire sequence and your entire uh, level. If you want to add some of your own assets to Sketchfab that you've created, like say your character or any assets you're proud of, just for your own portfolio, absolutely you should. I'm not sure how you can, I don't think you can handle that, an entire sequence um, of of the of your entire level and the camera angles and the VFX. I don't think Sketchfab will handle that. Okay, so something like this um, does not say there's no info of like how long Jesus. it'll take. But yeah, this Good is fucking lord. It's a lot. It's a lot, and this is a real time rendering, which is great. Scary. So this is probably a marmoset or something. I don't know. Um, this is a Mario will look in twenty years. Hmm. No, it's a full. Like no, it's 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 the new Mario movie. So something like this, that this probably wouldn't take a year. Um, this would probably be like maybe a month, but like a month every day, um, depending on how fast you work. Some people could knock this out in over a weekend. Uh, not me, but some people could. So like it's, this is what I mean when I'm like, if this is 150k, I mean fair. But if you're 150k and don't look anything like this, then you know, you're probably. Uh -huh. And that like month timeline that would just be for the model, like that for like, I guess like animations and rigs like in game. Oh, uh, that would be just for the model, like texturing it and um, again, again it really depends. If your like full time job is just this, maybe two weeks, maybe not a month. If like literally every day that's all you're doing, um, because there's a lot going on here. There's like hair cards. There is. Uh, these, all these little stubble bits, they're all little hair bits. Um, the eyes are pretty difficult to do. Um, it's crazy because it doesn't look like cards. It looks like actual hair. It does. Uh, it could be actual modeled hair. Do the little stubble bits. So mm -hmm. there's two ways. You could either literally model it. There's like a fur or hair modeling thing in ZBrush. Um, I don't think there is the equivalent in Mudbox. But essentially it like populates... With these would be tiny little cylinders. That's one way. Uh, or you do hair cards. And uh, you basically just like tell it to populate loads of little hair cards around here. Um, this one looks like actual wires. Like little wire models. I don't know. Let's see if we can get more. Insta, YouTube. Let's see. Let's Is there a way to like paint them on a surface? Or would you have to do each one like individual? Uh, no, no. In, in, in something like ZBrush, you can paint them on a surface. Uh, it's, it's like oh a God, mesh brush. Uh, no, it doesn't show. That's annoying. It just shows a turnaround. Um, I wonder. CJ. I wonder if there are. A lot of these people don't show the process. Um, I don't think it's that they're hiding it. I think it's just that it's like effort to continue uh, recording everything. Oh, this dude looks yeah. pretty good. Um, subscribe. That's the last of this. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So it doesn't show the process a lot. It just shows Entrance, job. Uh, the finals. Um, yeah, unfortunately, there's no, there's not many process stuff here. Like there are a few process YouTube videos. Um, I have not found a great one. They've always kind of like skipped stuff because it's a long process. Like this, this, as I said, this could be a week. Sometimes could be a few days. Um, it does not say how long it takes him. Doesn't say. But if we extrapolate, so this is like three weeks and that's two weeks. So maybe a week in between. Unless he like does a good few at a time and then bumps him out. Um, either way, it's like this person is a professional, obviously. Um, and it takes them a week, right? So at least we don't know, but it seems like it takes them a week um, at least. So that's that's something I, I, that's why I was saying like I do think it's not. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, I don't think you should be attempting something like this as your first ever character. You should be going way simpler, uh, something way more low poly. Um, so let's have a look at our Sketchfab. Sketchfab's pricing has become quite annoying. So 
so you're probably wanting to be looking at, at stuff more around this level. Also be careful, sometimes they say low poly, but they're not. Um, another trick that people often use for your first ever character, which is what we did for the robots uh, when we did animation, it's like robotic characters or um, really stylized characters where like it, the proportions are completely blown all over the top. Um, the reason being, if you mess up a little bit of animations with those, like with this, if this is a bit messed up animation wise, you don't really notice because it's it's so over the top. We don't have a basis of reference. The more realistic and the closer you get to realistic um, and the closer you get to humanoid, the more, um, I guess, people will start like noticing errors because you you start looking like people we see every day. Like, I don't see this every day. I don't see a rhino warrior walking around. So I don't really have a frame of reference. Um, I'll kind of know if it's terrible animation or great animation, but it's in general a lot, a lot more slide. If um, if I have something that is like that Mario, like it, it, things become exponentially difficult to animate. So like if I animated this Mario now, I couldn't just if do If he looks like, like a real person, then he has to move like a real person. But it's not even moving. Like the closer you get to moving, I'll need to do like eye twitches. I'll need to do like little... Um, like little muscle spasms, which everyone does. If you if you just look at yourself long enough, you'll do that. Like little emotional expressions, these wrinkles would have to change. You'd have to do like a. Um, uh, if anyone's played Phantom Pain, that's the most obvious example that I know of. Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain. At the start, there's a bit where you are escaping, um, and you're wounded, um, and you're just crawling on the floor. But the back of Snake ripples from like muscle movements and that's not like an animation that's like a, a normal map changing so you're blending between a smooth normal map to a, a, a normal map where the muscles are bunched up it's like all these little things need to happen when you're starting to get to realistic characters which is why it's so much easier to just stick with a stylized character when you're starting out so all these things um I, I, there's a very good um there's a guy you should follow he's He's an Irish like artist. Works in, he works mostly with um, materials, but he does do um, occasional kind of like characters and facial stuff. He did like a scan of his dad and tried to animate it, and it looked really weird. It took him he, like he kept iterating on it for ages. And one of the things he realized is that eye movements. Um, so no one ever like has an eye that directly fixes in place eyes always have like a little tiny jitter they kind of like have a little um tremor almost um I'm, it's probably pretty far back i'm not sure whether i can oh it's all by it's not labeled that's annoying um i definitely follow this guy pete mcnally.com he's a good guy super sound as well um and yeah so it, it's if I have something as realistic as this i do need to think about all of that whereas if i have like this Nobody cares about the eye tremor on this model. I don't need to have an eye tremor on this model. I don't yeah, even need cute. to have a blink on this model. Possibly you could just have the eye. It'd be nice if I did have a blink, but I don't even need to. Just move around and, and that's about it. So again, there's always this exponential. People always think that it's always just about making it look better. It's not. It comes with like corresponding um, e extra costs. So the more, the extra, every step in complexity up you take uh, makes everything else more complex. Uh, and then, like, just even think about interactions with the environment. Like, look at it. It's, car it's carrying a paintbrush. If I wanted it to pick up a paintbrush in um, this, like, it's just shoved through the hand. Don't even care about it. Like, in Unity, I'd just be like, okay, just child that there. And then unchild it later. Um, and that's super easy to do. But if this was a realistic hand, I now need to think about like weight, picking it up, like contact details. How does the hand shape move? It needs to like look realistic. This I just like shove in a paintbrush. So everything else just like exponentially increases. So I would I would highly like be highly critical of like your uh, complexity level and what you're trying to do because of all the ancillary costs that are related to this. Okay. Um, so we will begin with like just a basic box model. Um, do you want to take a little break before we do that? I know it's a little early. Or should we continue on?
Okay. All right, so I'm just creating a box here. I'm not even caring about the segments just yet. So I'm going to have that in here. And I also am not really caring about proportions yet because I'll shrink it back down to whatever um, my correct proportions are. Let me just, this is a new 2ds Max. Let me just make sure my unit setup is correct. It is not. Okay. This would be, okay, 20 meters by one. Um, yeah, I'll shrink it down later. I just care about overall proportions right now. Uh, and later I'll, I'll set up a two by one meter box and I'll shrink it down to that size. Uh, so for now, let me get this like basically around ish. If you think about a bounding box of like your torso, so everywhere from your like pelvis up to your um, top of your chest, kind of a bounding box around that area. Uh, and again, this depends on the type of uh, the type of character you're doing, like whether it's really stylized with super long limbs or super short stubby limbs, like a cute chibi character. So this could be like, if this is a chibi, it could be like really tiny body, right? Whereas if this was like a really stylized long character, I'm, I could um, I could stretch it out quite a bit. Uh, so let me go like something kind of stylized and long limbs so you can see what I'm doing as opposed to a chibi. So I'm um, just mostly trying to get it more or less the same size so what i need in terms of segments and i can always add segments we know that true modeling but just to start off with what i need in terms of segments i know i need a, a neck coming out from here minimum i need one neck i know i need like an armhole here an armhole here and then two little armholes here okay so um in terms of segments just to start off with that'll be my neck something like that and i'll need some armholes here and i'll need like i'll need like a cut here in the Turn off the grid. I'll need a cut here for the waist for bending as well. Um, so I think let's start with this. Uh, we can always add more later, but for now, yeah, let's start with this. Okay, so I'm starting off trying to get the base mesh. Now, again, let me reiterate you don't have to do all of this. Like I'm showing you the box modeling version. There are a lot of base meshes out there that already exist. Um, you can just use them as your base models, just as long as you reference them. But in case you do need to ever make something weird, um, that's like non-standard, this is useful to know. Um, so you can, you can, for your future models. Uh, let me start with three. Let me start with three. Yeah, let me start with three. Can always add more seconds. Okay. We go to edit poly. Uh, and I won't do symmetry just yet. I just want to kind of just work. So I am essentially creating a little bit of a So if you imagine if this is where my neck comes up, like you know the way that little slope that your neck has before it reaches your arms. So I'm gonna create that. Um always, always rotate, but let's do this the easy oh am I even looking at the front? I'm not. The front is here. So let's rotate that entire thing to face the front. Okay. So I'm trying to create that, um, as I said, the kind of slope on the angle of the, on like your upper shoulder. Um, and I'm worrying about the, right now, I'm just worrying about the frontal profile and then I'll go back um, to the back profile, uh, to the side profile, sorry, and tweak that, and then I'll go to the top profile. So I'm doing this one axis at a time, but I'm always remembering every single axis. So this will be kind of like, um, I hope, hopefully you can kind of see a torso starting to show up. So this is like my pelvis area, hip area, like depending if a wider hip or a short, small, shorter hip, and it's very blocky right now but that's fine because i'm just basically getting the uh, overall silhouette i don't want to get too messed up on the um on like the amount of polygons yet so like you can see that's like a torso hopefully arm will come out from here head will come up from there legs will come up from here hopefully you can see that um, and it makes sense okay and then we'll go to the side and obviously it's terrible from the side uh but that's fine we knew that so from the side um, your neck would be there, but it 
chest would come down a bit. You'd probably pull this back a bit. Your waist always mostly pinches in, almost always. Uh, and your back, imagine your character standing straight, your back would have like a little curve in. Um, and we're going to try and define a little bit of the butt. And again, we're super low poly, so we're not like going uh, here. And let's do the front. So hopefully that makes sense as well. You can kind of see a body shape showing up. And I'm also trying to get these center bits to um, sort of align so they're not just straight in, because I want them to flow with the body shape as well. So put that. Oops. And you can see, like, because I have less polygons, uh, less vertices, it's much easier to work with this. Ooh, did I pick up a wrong vertex there? Yeah, that's right. Uh, because I have way less vertices, it's much easier to work um, with at the moment. And I can always, like, add more later. But I have very few now, so it's easier to kind of, like, to mess with the topology of it. Okay, cool. All right. Um, that's pretty okay. I'm sure I missed I missed a few. Yeah, I did. Uh, but that's fine. I'll just symmetry this later. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now we forgot the top, so let's do it from the top. So you can see it's still a box from the top, which is not great. So... I want these to kind of come in, get that rounded torso shape, and the same for the bottom. And again, less vertices, so there's less for me to do right now. Okay, so we got like a pretty rounded. Hopefully, you can kind of see that that looks a bit like a torso. Yes, no? I hope so. And just doing some fine little tweaks here. Cool. Uh, let's save desktop. Asset design. Um, what was this called again? It's a base model. Um, and so now here's where we start extruding stuff out. Um, I will have a little thing. So I, I know I want an arm to come out from here, right? And this is going to be the chest area. So what I might do is let me grab everything along here. I might add a segment here. Um, let me put this. Connect all of them. Um. And I might add my symmetry now, actually. So I need to do with one side of the body only. So X symmetry, no Z symmetry. And that's fine. Okay. And I'm going to try to expand this out so it has, like, you know, a, a, a rounded shape because an arm is rounded not not a square so it's relatively rounded pull that up and i'm going to try to make sure these are straightish so this is kind of the first um important area that i want to deal with because this is going to be my shoulder right so let's pull these in actually a bit too much of a buff chest 
So this is my shoulder area. Um, so I need to be careful with this. So what I can do is just delete that. And I'll extrude from here. And I'm just going to like get the entire um, arm out straight first, and then I'll bend it down later and, uh, and, and tweak those segments. So let me just get more or less the right shape first. So you, your arm generally tapers down towards the elbow. So let's say this. Uh, this is where it might be nice to have a reference image. But for now, let's just keep going. And then I'm going to have like a little elbow squish in here, like a little tiny little elbow. And then I'm holding shift and drag to expand, by the way. Kind of would you want to have a sort of like segmented joint at the shoulder? I would, but I, um, what I was saying is that I'll bend this down first uh, and then I'll, I'll cut the segments later. Okay. I, I, I should have one, but just for now, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to deal with the overall shape first, um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll segment it. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. I'm yeah. pretty sure my arms are a bit too long, but let's see. A little, a little too buff. Um, and let's do a very simple palm. Palm kind of flattens down. This would be the. Let's do mittens. I could do fingers, but let's just do mittens for now. Um, if you're going fingers, you probably you're looking at a much more complex. And uh, let's just cap that. Um, and if I wanted a thumb, I would just like I'll extrude it out of here. So let me connect this first. And that's like a little mitten. If I wanted a thumb, I would probably extrude it from. Here, so let's do a little connect. Move that there. And let's extrude from here. Um, Kind of makes sense. Um, it's a little bit of a fat thumb, but whatever. And then we can squish it down if we want to. Okay, so you can kind of see why I'm, I, I like doing it straight first because it's easier to like deal with all this stuff um, this way, I think. Um, so let me space out the segments here a little bit, let's give it more of a space to squish and then let's do some of some shaping here as well, so let's like connect these let's do kind of like, a, oops, I hate when this happens perspective, there we go so like getting a real buff, like a little bit of a curve there very buff body um, do connect here as well. This is where we get some bicep action in. And then we're starting to build the shoulder here. So there's a little bit of a squish here for the shoulder. Um, and one more here to bump out. The, oops, sorry. Ah. Uh, let's actually only go up in this direction. So I'm I'm exaggerating it here so you can see it, but hopefully that makes sense, what's happening. Um, and I want to make sure that this shape, it's not perfect right now, so I'm going to try and make sure that the shape is pretty good before I start like bending or doing anything crazy. Um, and I'm individually, these can be a bit more squished because they're the under the arms, so they won't be as like, they won't be bending out as much, I don't think. These come out a bit more, upper shoulder should probably flow in a bit more from the upper torso, 
So you can kind of see why I like it straight as well, again, because uh, it's easier to deal with at this stage. Um, and then the, for this part, what we were talking about of like, um, I want this to, part to be able to to stretch what I can do. I know it's a try, but you can like connect here and connect here. So this area will stretch and then here we can have that squish. We could even get rid of these two if we wanted to. Uh, I think they're okay. Connect. And then we'll move these closer. Does that make sense? So when they squash, you can see like this will accordion out. We can even pull that out. So it's a little bit of a, oops, a little bit of a elbow bump. So these will accordion like stretch out and these will squish in, if that makes sense. So we're using the topology to help us uh, define define the shape as well. Um, and always remember to look around. So let's say I'm more or less, it's very long arm. <laughs> Uh, but let's say I'm more or less happy with this. Squash it down a little bit. Uh, what I could do then is let me grab this area. I'll do a soft selection. Do, 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 do. And just drop down the fall off quite a bit. So then if I rotate this to a 45 degree angle. I should get, mm, no, it's too hard. Um, let's do, okay, much better. Um, and again, there's there's two schools of thought, right? Some people like to do the, the full T-pose, like what we started off with, because um, it's easier as well. Some people like to then put it into the 45 degree angle, um, or not. So I like the 45 because I think, to me, it is a relaxed version for the shoulders. It allows you to rig the shoulders so they kind of squish or, or not squish. Um, we might collapse these too, actually. Should we collapse these? Yeah, let's collapse these. So, where's claps do? Um, and again, that's because we want it to. So you can kind of see like it squishes out there that way, if that makes sense. Um, and then we can pull this closer there. So yeah, so some people like the, um, the 45 degree angle because it allows us to kind of have this relaxed shoulder shape. So if I squish it up when I, after I animate and rig it, if I squish it up, it uh, it squashes correctly and doesn't. And if I, if I drop it down to its sides, it doesn't um, it doesn't stretch this too much because I have enough segments to handle the move. Uh, my shoulders are a little buff, but sure. Okay, so there we go. Um, pretty decent. All right, hand body, and we just did pretty good. We might want to actually allow those mittens to to bend. Uh, connect, and uh, let's make that planar because it's not bent. I want it to to be flat. I should have done this before I bent it down this way, but let's make planar. And then I can rotate that so it's I should have done this one out straight. My bad. Um, let 
Let's check that now. The front shoulder. Yeah, always, always look around before you move on. Let's do a more natural flow into the shoulder area, and a bit more bulge here in the back. And this is too bulged out. So yeah, always do a check before you move on to other stuff. Possibly even too many segments here, but it's fine. Cool, all good. Um, then we will now move to our leg area before we will do the head final. Um, I might even do the head separately, but we'll see. Okay, let's do the leg area. So now I know I need a leg coming out of here. And this is probably the most complex bit. Let's go like something like that. And let's bring these up here. Okay, just trying to get around it, like, because your, your leg is kind of rounded down the pelvis area as well. And I want to get around it from the side as well. Make sure everything's good. Um, okay, and let's see what happens if I extrude this shape now. Is that rounded enough? Let's give it a bit more tweaking. So I'm literally trying to define like the butt and hip area before I extrude anything because whatever I extrude from this will take on this shape. Okay, let's go. Uh, uh, maybe a bit here, sorry. I just want to make sure that this is good before I go. Annoyingly, I can't select this. That's annoying. I should be able to deal with it later. And let's do an extrude and see what happens. Okay, we don't want this, so we're going to rotate that down. Try to have the hips. So you kind of see why I was uh, being so careful to get the shape right. Because if I have it right, extrudes up fine and I'll make that planar so it's flat do 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 make planar okay. pretty decent I might need to segment these up and, and add more of a connection here I definitely will later but let's go on with this first so this is the upper part of the thigh Smaller. So 
So again, if you don't know anatomy very well, this is a bit thick. If you don't know anatomy very well, you may want to have a reference. Um, so I'm, again, you can see here, because I took the time to make the shape uh, okay at the start, it means that I can just keep going all the way down to the bottom. So like taking the time to, do, to get things right at the start just makes your life easier in the long run, always. Um, is this too long? It's a little long. Squish these up a bit. If I missed it, yes. Okay, the feet are a bit of a pain. can collapse them if you want to, but I'm just squatting them. And extending the knee area. Hopefully you can see how when that bends that'll act like a knee. Okay, enough of holding it off too long. So there's two ways. We can keep extruding from this, or we can build a separate foot and connect them. So I know I need one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need eight segments at the top. I'm just trying to think how I can do this. Might be easier to make a box so I can get a foot shape on it. Easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I now need eight, uh, an eight sided hole to appear here. Um, but let's worry about getting the shape right first. And maybe one height segment. Is that enough for feet? Let's find out. I'm actually going to use an FFD for this one.
And you can kind of see the FFD allows me to um, go back and change the amount of segments to fit what I need if I don't have enough or if I have too many or whatever. Let's bring that up. Get a little foot shape. Okay, let's see if that works. And I'm sure I'll take it a bit later as well. Um, and I need an eight sided hole in the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it needs. Teeny tiny foot. Ugh, maybe I should have extruded this. Yeah, I think I should have just extruded this foot. Oh well. Should be able to go to should be a free form, I think. No. Cheap poly. Hmm, that should verified a bit of more than it has.
<laughs> looks like he's wearing Crocs. Um, so I've got a good bit of tweaking to do here. Possibly I've done the mistake of what I told you not to do, which is add too many polygons. So it's difficult for me to go and tweak the overall shape now. Uh, we're getting there. Okay, so we got that. Is that a bit too much? It's a bit. Oh, that foot's terrible. That is a really bad foot. I think I, I think I might extrude it. Oh, this is. Sometimes we try things and it don't work. Yeah, it's a terrible foot. Wouldn't it be the shape of the force? Wouldn't it be like a from the side be more of an uh, isosceles triangle? So you've got it gradually going down towards the force or the toes instead of just flat. Yeah, but that's that's kind of why I'm saying it looks awful. Ah. Boy, do I hate Treatise Max shortcuts sometimes. We should have just extruded, this is so much easier.
And again, if you want to go toes, you go right ahead. Okay, that was a million times easier. I don't know why we didn't just do that to start. Possibly should come up here a bit more as well. Let's do that. Can I connect this? Nope. Uh, do a cut. Oh dang, that's a end gone. Okay. Finally, the head, we don't need this crappy foot, go away. Ugly foot. Okay, so finally, the head area. So, this is a little complex. Not that it hasn't been so far. So I'm trying to make that like kind of back area. Annoying that I can't grab this. Let's throw another edit poly over so I can grab that, this vertex. Oh, surely, surely. That's super annoying. Oh, it's good low. Dang it. Let's see if I can grab it. Super annoying. I don't want to collapse this yet. Ah, uh, I might have to. Here. I thought it crashed it for a second. So we may have to collapse this now. Um, I make a copy of this, so I just have this in case I mess this up. Okay, and I will collapse this. Return to poly.
getting some back muscles here. And we need a segment here for sure. Okay, while we're here, we need a segment here. And we need a segment here. Oh no. Don't know when I did that. So now we have two options. We can continue extruding this. We can have a separate head like we tried to do with the foot. Um, we can have a completely separate piece and not attach it, just have it like merge in there. Um, the reason why we might want a completely separate piece is because then we can have higher detail on it. But I'm just trying to think what we will do. Let's just keep extruding and see what happens. Maybe it'll work. So now I want this to start looking like a head. So let me just grab this. That'll be the back area. This is the sides of the head. I'll cut these into segments in a bit. It's just easier for me to get the overall basic shape down first.
All right, don't worry too much about the that side. We're going to symmetry this again so we can ignore ish that. Cool, and then we got a base mesh. <sighs> Job done. Took a little while, but we got there. I'll probably need to cut this as well, do some stuff at the top. Let's do that now. Oh, I'll need to. Oh, it's so annoying.
this is not symmetric properly. Cool. Any more questions? Or any questions so far? Got a base model. We can now bring this into. Uh, we can either use it as is. Um, Texture it like it's a very simple model, of course, or we can use that as a base model. Um, I've kind of made a very generic human, but you could make a chibi version so it's smaller with stubbier legs and stubbier, uh, a much larger head. You could make a really stylish version with much longer arms and legs, so it's kind of up to you. Um, but the base model allows you to kind of like start with something, um, and then if you want to, either sculpt on it or retopology and, and then retopologize it later. Let me just pause.